nothing but airsoft and this is my review of the Real Sword SVD. The Real Sword SVD features a full still CNC machined receiver including a full still adjustable mock gas tube, outer barrel, front sight, rear sight, and a 96 round magazine. The gun also features a real plywood made handguard which is shaped by hot bending techniques and a plywood made wood stock which is hand carved which also features a still rear sling mount and a still butt pad. The cheek piece on the stock is removable by pressing this lever down which releases the latch and it comes off. It's made of the same high quality plywood material and real still. It's also topped with a soft leather cover. On the left side of the receiver you will find this side rail which allows you to mount optics such as this Belarusian POSP. Simply slide it onto the rail and move the lever to lock it into place and it's not going anywhere. You can also mount the PSO-1M2 scope made by Real Sword, but nothing's better than the real deal. But don't expect to mount a standard AK side rail because it won't fit. It only fits specific SVD mounts. So if you want to buy a BPO2 mount to mount a different optic, you can do that. But you can't mount just a standard AK rail. Towards the front of the receiver on both sides, you will find these slots, which allow you to mount a specifically designed SVD bipod. You simply just clamp it to the receiver like so, and then tighten down the screw, which I'll do now. Due to the fact that Real Sword uses similar materials in manufacturing, as to the real gun, they come in at a very realistic weight. The Real Sword SVD AAG weighs in just at a little bit over 9 pounds compared to the real one, which weighs in at just a little under 9.5 pounds. With the scope and the bipod I have mounted here, it weighs in at just a little over 13 pounds, which it makes it non desirable for some players and definitely not recommended for younger players. Internally, the gun features four super beefy gears instead of the standard three, which puts less stress on the gearbox and pulls back the stock M130 spring, which I have here, with ease. You will notice that this spring is slightly shorter than standard AEG springs, but it can take standard AEG springs with no problem. And I have since upgraded mine with the M140 spring. Because of the design, you can pull back an M170 spring with only an 8.4 volt battery, which is basically unheard of in airsoft guns. The cylinder is also bore up, which allows enough air to push the BB through the extremely long 690 millimeter barrel, which has an inner diameter of 6.05 millimeters. The piston, which I have here, is comparable to the SR25 piston which has 19 half cut teeth, two of them which are still. Upon purchasing this gun in the box, you will find some very important tools. First is the front sight adjustment tool, which adjusts the sight left to right. If you want to move the sight to the right, you insert it on the left side, like I'm gonna demonstrate now. If you were gonna do it the other way, you would insert it onto the right side to move it left. So first, you insert it like this into the slot, and then you turn it upwards. So the screw on the other side of this will be hitting the sight when you turn this. That moves the screw into the front sight, which pushes it to the left. Second is a cleaning slash unjamming rod, which comes in this little nifty box, and it's pieced together by these little metal pieces. I have the rest of it pieced together, but to demonstrate, you simply just take it, and screw it together. You can also use the pointy end of your wrench that sticks in the hole and also allows you to screw it. The third tool is the old style speed loader. To use this, you take this end, you grab some BBs, put them in. I recommend G&G &G or other high quality 0.3 gram BBs due to the fact that they're heavy, the heaviest weight white BBs you can get which allows you to see the BBs very easily through your scope and to compensate for second shots very easy. Then you take the plastic jam part of it, you stick that in there down to the BBs, and then now that you have some BBs loaded up in there, 
you take your magazine, you're going to press down on this plastic end after you stick it into the magazine, you press down on it, see the BBs go down, and then it loads the BBs into the magazine. Now I recommend using a standard speed loader over this, but it's still cool that it comes with the it. The final tool is the wrench, and it's one of the most important tools. It has many uses, I'll go over them now. To start off with, it's the front sight elevation adjustment. You simply set it in, and you turn it anti-clockwise to raise the sight and lower your shot, where you turn it clockwise to lower, lower the front sight, which puts your shot higher. The second use is you can also adjust the gas tube, just like the real one. You just simply put this on and you turn it. Although it does nothing, it's a cool feature and it just shows how real sword, how far real sword goes to make the gun as realistic as possible. Third use, which is probably the most important use of the wrench, uh, goes along with the gearbox and lock switch. Since this is a semi-automatic firing mode only gun to stay true to the real SVD, uh, it doesn't have an automatic firing mode. So they've installed it with a gearbox and lock switch inside of the gearbox which allows you to fire in full automatic mode to unlock your gearbox in the case that you have a semi-automatic lockup. So to reach that, the first step you do is you remove the magazine, you set it on a fire, and then you point it in a safe direction away from people or animals, and then I have to get you a good view of this up here in the gearbox you'll see this metal piece right there that piece you press on right right here you press on with the pointy end of the wrench which I'm going to go ahead and do now so you take the pointy end you get in there Make sure it's pointing in a safe direction. You feel that, push it back. Then you have to pull the trigger, which fires it in full automatic. Then you let it go. If you fire from now on, it's still in semi-automatic. And that unlocks it. The fourth use of the tool is if you plan on not using the gun for a while, you can disassemble it down to the gearbox. And at the rear of the gearbox, there's a little slot that you can stick this pointy end into which will release the spring uh, which just allows it to be decompressed and gives your spring a longer life. With the gun you will also receive a real sword SVD manual which is pretty thick, very detailed and one of the best airsoft manuals I've ever dealt with. Basically it lets you know everything you need to know about the gun. A registration form and it also comes with a quality certificate and then it comes with a disassembly chart poster thing. So in conclusion to this review, I want to talk to you about this gun's performance. You may have a hard time finding yourself spending $700 plus, because you can't really find this gun anywhere in the States. Plus, good scopes are going to cost you $200, then an extra mags are going to cost $35 each, plus a bipod, and you're going to find yourself end up spending at least a grand on this gun. So is it worth it? Absolutely. When it comes to accuracy, you're going to be able to hit a penny from 30 feet, no problem. And as far as range, it can hit a man-sized target from 240 feet 9 out of 10 times with an M140 spring. Max range, you could probably squeeze out 255 feet. Stock with an M130, you probably could get about 215 feet. And as far as upgrades, I've done the M140 and the gearbox has been reshimmed, which isn't really necessary, but that's all I've done. I do a spring, unless you, it just depends on what your filled rules are. I'd go as high as you can without, you know, with still being able to be in the rules. Uh, I'd leave the hop-up rubber, and you could do a barrel. Uh, you could do a wide bore for more accuracy, or a tight bore for extra FPS, but you're going to have a hard time finding 690mm barrels, so I'd just keep the stock one. Uh, I would also maybe look into our hop, but other than that, get some extra pistons, and you'll be good, because that's really the only thing that ever has a tendency to fail on it. But other than that, guys, 
uh, I try to make this video as detailed as possible, but I'm sure I missed some stuff. So if you have any questions, post a comment below, and I'll try to respond to every single comment. Uh, so, anyways, to end it, here's a short vid of me shooting my gun through a scope, uh, through the scope at 150 feet. And note, it was very windy, so that's why I was curving left. But other than that, guys, thanks. <coughs>